Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Uh, in the last lecture, we have discussed about various structural component pertaining to the high rise structure and we discussed on the interior structure. In that part, uh, uh, what we understand that mostly uh, the load bearing members, major structural members are placed interior of the building. Now, we move forward and we will see the different kind of structural element and their uh, mechanism, their property, their association related to the exterior structure. That means, in short, in this category, all the structural members like or majority of the structural members are placed at the perimeter of the building of high rise structure and that refer to the exterior structures. So, without further delay, let us start this particular discussion. Here also this is a beautiful skyline and always like the reason to start the lecture with this uh, nice photograph is to just get a sense how beautiful it looked like, but with this beauty, with this beautiful form, aesthetic, uh, you know pleasant, we should also know the structural system, so that we can actually know the mechanism even with our further exploration, we can also try this for our design. Now, this is again a repetitive slide to start with, I repeat this slide again. So, where mostly uh, the high rise structure two different component, load component majorly to be taken into consideration. First one is basically the axial load or the vertical load, which is also referred to the gravity load and then it is acting uh, like vertically towards the center of the earth and this is called vertical load. Now, compared to that as because the highs increases, there will be uh, you know high speed and due to that wind speed, uh, there will be much more lateral load. So, we should also take that into consideration. So, this is something of where wind will play a crucial role for the high rise and even we have discussed many a times with the increase of the height, uh, the pressure, the wind pressure is also increasing uh, exponentially. So, that we need to take care of. Not only the wind, but at the same time, if your building is uh, somewhere in the earthquake prone area, then definitely there will be a threat from the earthquake or seismic activity, then there will be some oscillation and that will have a direct implication impact on the high rise. So, this lateral load and as well as the gravity load to be taken into consideration for the high rise structure. Now, coming to the components in general terms, we have columns which will be basically responsible in most of the cases to take care of the gravity load. Beam is basically taking care of the lateral load and also it will basically uh, you know transfer the load of the floor to the column and also it will protect uh, against the lateral load. Then the shear wall is basically again uh, extended column we may say that which will act as a cantilever to the base which will helpful to you know take care of the lateral load as well as the gravity load. The bracing is basic uh, you know uh, give better stability and also resist against the lateral load for the structure and in this case the bracing can be done in many way it may be one side diagonal bracing, it may be of cross diagonal bracing, it may be sometimes of k diagonal bracing. 
So, we have seen in our previous discussions how the bracing uh, can you know help it. Basically, this will uh, act as a triangulation or triangulated uh, member associationship. So, in that uh, relationship, uh, it will act as a truss and then it will uh, make it easy to transfer the load. Now, also we discussed about the core and core depending on the position, we have already discussed the central core. It may be split core in different parts, it may be one ended core or maybe we can have atrium and the core. So, core will give uh, the internal stability. The core can be made of uh, shear wall, it can be of frame structure that we have discussed uh, in uh, the part 1 of this uh, discussion like uh, where we discussed about the interior structure. Now, for the interior structure and exterior structure, interior structures were major uh, part or major portion of the structural member responsible for the you know axial and lateral load is placed uh, inter, uh, you know interior of the building is interior structure and whereas, when it is to be placed at the perimeter, then it will become your exterior structure. So, in this slide if you look it carefully, the placing of the main columns um, if we see this as a plan and this is a view. So, in this case all the structural members major and remember major part of the uh, load is carrying by this. So, that is why I uh, refer it to the majority of the structural members because the um, structure which will uh, take the lateral load resisting uh, resist, uh, resistant. So, they, they will be placed uh, at the center or maybe interior not centered uh, all the time. Uh, we have seen in the code that different kind of thing, but interior. So, here it is placed in this com in on contrast we can see in this plan that uh, those columns are placed at the perimeter. Okay. And uh, if you see the view, it will look something like that. This is a schematic view, but this is basically the exterior. So, in upcoming slide, we will not discuss with the interior, we will only discuss the part of the exterior structure and uh, how uh, like uh, we can reach to a different height and how we can make things, uh, you know, make, make systems uh, more stable, more, uh, you know, strong to that it can go uh, even the higher uh, you know reach and then can make tall story. Now, here it is again a, a schematic pictorial where it shown the you know, story number of story that average story we can uh, achieve with this kind of structure if we use for high rise and then these are different system. So, basically in this case uh, there are frame structure and this frame structure can be made of concrete, it can be of uh, your steel. Then uh, we can move to the tube structure. So, frame structure, normal frame structure that uh, we have seen in the interior structure, but here uh, the first category that we can see here is basically tube structure. So, what is tube structure? We will come to that. Then we have diagrid and in some of the lectures we have uh, seen that diagrid means where the grid uh, itself is uh, not perpendicular to the edge, it is making a diagonal. So, if a structural system is designed according to this, we will have a diagrid structure. Then we have x, uh, this is number 1, diagrid number 2, third is your exoskeleton structure. So, skeleton structure means if I say that okay, I am here. So, my skeleton if I just remove everything and if I just make, a, make an x-ray, so whatever the skeleton will look. So, this is basically hidden. So, this is inside my body, but sometimes it I uh, just to try to make something where you know the whole structure is outside of the building and giving the uh, support. Uh, to the building and also resist the lateral load and that can be exoskeleton. So, which is uh, actually uh, in outside of the building or maybe it is we can call at the exterior. So, we will 
see that uh, how that system is working and also some uh, re relevant examples uh, on that particular node. Now, on that uh, when we have this tube structure diagrid and the exocollision, sometimes even to go high we can have bundle tube. So, if you have one tube and then we make one after another they are connected. So, that will make bundle tube structure. Now, sometimes we can also have tube in tube structures. So, we will discuss in that. Now, beyond that there is another system where we use the diagonal bracing to create some uh, space truss. So, this is another category to that and then moving forward we can have super frame. Okay. This is another concept where we can even go beyond that. Even now also in the recent times uh, uh, we also improve this super frame concept and we can have uh, super frame conjoint model. So, then we can even go higher with this structure and again we can use uh, steel for this kind of uh, material or maybe the main portion of uh, the structure will be in steel and then the concrete or the composite material. So, now we slowly uh, move forward and we will try to see what are the types and then each types of them at least we can get one example and then I suggest you you search similar more examples. So, that you can understand that okay, this building basically the fundamental structure is being adopted with this concept. Now, coming to this slide exterior structure uh, mainly we can see five types into this category. So, one is tube system, then diagrid system, exoskeleton system, space structure system and super frame structural system. And now, uh, we move to the tube system. Now, what is tube? Okay. I am um, like I am uh, saying or I am uttering this tube uh, so many times uh, till now, but what is exactly the tube? So, I just make it very simple. So, instead of tube in structure, if I ask you the tube that we use for the water supply or maybe the tube we use to you know uh, spray water to the garden. So, it is basically something like this we will have a thickness. So, you have outer circle and we have inner circle and the thickness is basically your outer circle radius and the inner circle radius. So, that will give you the tube form. Now, how it is different from the structural point of view? that is not much different. Okay. So, this is something which we are much familiar with the tube, but at the same time if I make something like this having a thickness we have a inner square and the outer square and this particular portion either it is solid okay, like this. So, this is tube. Sometimes we do not even fill the entire cross section, but instead of that we just placed the structural element slow close to each other okay so close to each other that it will look like it will act like a tube and that is the main fundamental of this tube structure so whenever you place your columns very close to each other so that will help uh, to make your structure stable and also it will uh, make your structure resistant enough from the lateral sway due to the wind pressure at you know higher level at higher height. Now, what exactly it is let us understand this a hollow cantilever structure perpendicular to the ground to resist the lateral load. So, what is perpendicular then? Then if you have this ground okay, and then you just make this box. So, this is a plan and now you just erect this building. So, it will act as a cantilever. So, you just make a rotation to this surface. Now, if I just consider this as a ground and this is your column and then you just rotate it like this. So, this is basically act as a cantilever. Then 
closely spaced columns around the perimeter and this is very obvious to have the, on the per perimeter because we are now talking about the exterior structure. But we will see that sometimes even we can place these columns even interior in tube in tube structure means one tube outside one tube inside at the core and then we connect it with the floor or sometimes with the you know, you know we also call it diaphragm and then maybe with the beam, we will come to that. Now uh, in this case the perimeter as I mentioned and they are tied together with deep spandrel beam. Okay? So, it is getting connected all the columns to be connected at different levels okay, with a moment connection. The combined structure of columns and beams resulting a rigid frame provided a dense and strong structural wall along the exterior high rise. Now, what exactly it is? If we take this example where it is very solid, you can still make your building, but where from you will get the light? You will not have any view, it will act as a chimney, okay? chimney like or tower like structure. But we have to create the opening as well, we also have to get the view. For that reason, we just create some punctures okay? and when you place column close to each other, that means the opening percentage will be less. So, still it will act like a solid wall structure and that will protect your building, that will make your structure stable. So, here these are different schematic where you can see the frame tube where these are all small, small column, okay? not small exactly like here in the picture representative, but they are placed very close, closely each other. It may vary from 1.5 meter, 2 meter to even 3 meter and then it is getting connected with the spandrel beam, whereas it is a solid core like this, but there are some punctures to get uh, the view. Here it is the spandrel beam, here you can get that okay, your tube, the column spacing is little bit uh, you know away, not usual like this, but additionally in the elevation you can see that we can use some structural bracing. So, this is advantage of getting this diagonal brace tube where you can create uh, a good opening okay, to view outside. Now, bundle tube where you can see that uh, even interior different uh, individual structure being made together. Now, this is where it is single tube structure okay, and this is the bundle tube structure. So, you can either go with a solid one with little perforation or maybe you can uh, think of this structural bracing here. Now, coming to the tube in tube structure as I mentioned that where there will be an interior tube and exterior tube. So, this is one form where your uh, frame tube in tube. So, you can get this where perforated will have another core like this and then uh, in the bundle tube is basically the same thing. But here the bail process means at the height you can get something like uh, already we have seen in the previous that we at different floor levels, okay, maybe each uh, 15 floor or 20 floor will have a uh, truss to just make the truss belt. Now, coming to the tube system, again it is uh, subdivided into four categories, frame tube, brace tube, bundle tube and tubing tube. So, the first one is basically the frame tube. So, in this case the material can be steel, material can be concrete. So, again you can see that all these black square, small square are nothing but the columns and you can see that how close they are placed okay? and they are connected with a red line which is basically a spandrel beam and that will give you a structure something like this and you can uh, still use it up to certain level. Uh, and after that it will not really act because of this is when you use concrete, but with the steel you can even go up. In this frame structure exterior building columns are closely placed and rigidly connected with the deep spandrel beams and it is basically a base tube structure, a very basic tube structure that is similar. So, only difference it instead of uh, state of a solid tube, we have now the columns closely placed and they are connected. 
Coming to the example, in this case, this is uh, Avon Center in Chicago. So, in this case, these are this black portion, these triangles are nothing but the columns, these are visible here, you can see the profile, okay, how closely they are placed and this structure is looking very simple, but then also it is giving a beautiful, uh, you know, facet with your uh, this triangle uh, position of the column and here you can see that they are connected and then uh, the limitation that I have told you that you cannot have large opening because you have to place the columns very close to each other. Coming to the concrete again it will uh, be similar to that and you can see that uh, in some portion you can have a deep beam and all to just give better uh, rigidity. So, again it is uh, something very simple of a rectangular plan where columns are very closely placed and then it is just connected with this beam. Coming to the brace tube, in order to remove those uh, restriction related to the close spacing of between two columns, if we want to increase it, then in that case this bracing, structural bracing system will help us. Widely spread columns are stiffened with diagonal bracing and this will perform as a tube like this. So, here you can see that uh, compared to this uh, diagram is very closely placed. Now, it is placed little bit away and uh, if you see that okay, it is being uh, you know braced with the diagonal members. So, that will help. So, braces are nothing but the inclined column, yes, if you see the details so basically floor to floor or maybe sometimes it may combine of uh, say few floors and then they connect this all the floors and it is inclined common. So, it will solve the dual purpose, first it will help to uh, place those columns little bit away, at the same time it will also help to transfer the load from the floor to the column. So, this way it will help. Okay. The spacing between exterior columns can be widened and the size of the spandrel and as well as the columns can be reduced as because of this structural bracing. At the same time you can go the higher. So, coming to the example, this is one of the beautiful example in this category that John Hancock Center again in Chicago, Chicago USA like in this place you will get uh, very beautiful high rise structures and they are uh, really good example of the mega structure and high rise structure system. So, in this case uh, again you can easily see that okay, how this bracing is done. Okay, you have earlier if you remove it, it is nothing but uh, your column uh, closely placed column. Now, you can get some width you can get some opening. So, in that case this bracing will help us to have a wider opening. So, here you can see the structure and this is from the interior. So, in this case uh, you can still get this inclined bracing uh, into interior, but okay, considerably you can get a better view and if you place this in a symmetry or uh, all. So, it will give a different experience. So, this is made of steel, but with concrete also you can go with this. So, this is example of Ontary center again in uh, Chicago. So, here you can see how uh, this being done. So, again with this normal uh, you know column frame tube structure. So, diagonal being used okay, and there is no horizontal beam. So, this will actually help it to uh, uh, you know resist again the uh, lateral load. Moving forward, now uh, we are having the bundle tube system. So, where you have multiple uh, tube clo having a close proximity, we can tie up. So, this is true for your square tube or something like that. Okay. So, in this a cluster of individual tubes connected together and act as a single unit, that is the beauty in this. And here you can see that this is considered to be a single tube, this is another tube and they are connected to have a form of this. Spacing of the columns may be wider and we can use uh, 
bracing as well in, in, in this and that will help to place interior frames lines in a better use. Addition of diagonal bracing further increases the height. With this we can still go better than a single tube, but uh, again if you add bracing it will help to go further. So, this is again a, a very good example of the same category CS towers. Okay, again from the same place and here you can see if you see the plan. So, section is given. So, this is a section cut. So, you can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 by 3 grid and then how this being changed over certain you know height and uh, this is example of this particular bundle tube. Now, in the recent time there is another example you just go and search about this this is basically the Burj Khalifa. Now, coming to the concrete earlier it was made of steel. Now, in this bundle tube it, this is made of concrete and then in this example which is your uh, Carnegie Hall Tower. So, in this case uh, uh, you can also see similar kind of arrangement where the small block the large block they have been clapped together to create this. Coming to the last category of your tube system that is tube in tube where you have interior tube, the exterior tube, interior tube may be of solid, may be brace tube or the frame tube. As we can see in the slide, the core and the outer tube connected by the floor diaphragm which transfer the lateral load to both the system. So, in this case uh, uh, along with the exterior members the interior core will also take some portion of the lateral load. So, that is the reason we can even go higher with this. This is the example of Tabung Haji. So, where you can see this is a circular form. So, we have column placed outside. Okay. So, this is basically your uh, one tube and then you have a core system at the center and they are connected. So, this is one example of tube in tube system. Coming moving for, uh, from the tube structure to the next that is the diagrid system. In this diagrid system is basically uh, the vertical columns will be eliminated and conventional vertical columns are eliminated and it is forming uh, a grid which is diagonal like this. Diagonal members diagrid like it is something like bracing, but here it is uh, all the columns are uh, making this particular uh, grid as a diagonal. So, this system can carry gravity load as well as the lateral force. So, this is the beauty of this structure and this is only possible because of their triangulated configuration like the way the truss is distributing the load is the same manner efficiently resist the lateral shear by axial force in the diagonal member. So, this is actually helping to resist against your lateral shear, but the main uh, issue is the design and the complicated joint. So, when we make this structure during the construction proper care to be taken because it is not very simple even the shuttering will be something different. Coming to this example, so here you can see the building uh, 30 St. Mary Axe in London. So, again you can see here uh, the you know it will be better understood from this where it is under construction building where the members are basically making um, this grid and in a diagonal manner and these are the joints. So, this joint to be taken up special care of. Uh, and here you can see the opening. So, this is one uh, example under diagritic system where it is very simple where the steel being used to make the entire frame and the glass used as a glazing. Now, coming to a concrete little bit solid perforated one this is O14 building in Dubai. Now, you see the way I uh, told you that how to make the reinforcement and the overall grid. So, uh, this is basically a solid wall and where main beams are running and making a grid and those perforations. So, this is a beautiful example of uh, your 
diagonal but in a different form it's not exactly the column is visible making diagonal some angle but here it is some perforation coming to the ex, uh, exoskeleton system in this type the lateral load reducing system are placed outside the building lines sometimes like if this is your floor basically in order to take the load there is a connection from the building and you have the system outside and which will carry the load. It acts as a prime uh, uh, you know primary building identifier because we will first see those structure that your skeleton and then whatever inside. Interior floor is never obstructed by perimeter column. So, uh, this is basically having no such uh, columns or something. So, you can uh, get a different view uh, altogether. Coming to the example, uh, we have two examples. One is Morpheus Hotel in Macau designed by Jahadit group. So, here you can see that how this is being done. So, these members they are actually taking um, care of the lateral load which is actually protecting this. And the other example is from the Burj Al Arab in Dubai where again uh, the main structure uh, whatever the hotels you can get this insight is being supported by the external exoskeleton. So, here you can see that this whole structure being made and then all these beams and then the tr uh, space truss or space frame being um, you know attached to this building and it is holding the whole load of uh, this particular structure. So, this is another example of exoskeleton system you can definitely find more and I think uh, it will be better if you can search more and then share with me in the forum. Coming to the next category of that we have space truss system. So, in this space truss system is the space truss structure are modified breast tube with diagonal connecting exterior and interior. So, in uh, the earlier case in the bracing we just connect those exterior beam uh, this uh, beam to beam okay, at the junction of the column. So, this is the bracing. So, here also uh, with the frame we connect interior. In space trusses diagonal penetrate the interior of the building whereas, in a typical brace tube structure diagonal only placed a parallel to the exterior plane. So, what I explained this is in case of a brace tube structure but in this case they are actually connecting the interior. This also efficiently resists the lateral shear by the axial force present in the stress member and again it is uh, acting with the triangulated manner. But with this stress and all in the building wherever it being placed will have some obstruction to the exterior view. So, here the example of Bank of China. So, where you can see that uh, the truss being used at different level and also we have this diagonal bracing as normal and overall the structure you get is something like this. So, this is the example of space truss system and you can get more on that. Now, last but not the least into this category and as I said that now there are more advanced uh, improvement rather advancement and improvement to this super frame we can go for the conjoint uh, super frame structure and all these are the proposal you can go even better. But this concept is something developed uh, and then in this case uh, the super frame is composed of mega columns okay, comprising base frame of large dimension okay, at the building corner. So, these are very important things. So, first of all we have mega columns the size will be huge and they are placed at the corner of the building. So, if you see the plan, so these portions if you see that main columns are placed okay, at the corner. So, this particular portion if you see we can use that kind of uh, mega columns and linked by multi story trusses in each if uh, each uh, like for 15 to 20 floors. So, here also you can get that okay, you just make those columns okay, mega columns and then you give a connection at not in each floor, but in different floor. These links are designed to reduce the lateral displacement and the story drift due to the wind. Okay. 
enhancing the total stability as well because of this super column and the super beam combination. Coming to the category example, so this uh, Park U center tower, this is made of concrete, here also it being applied partially where uh, you know the core being designed with this uh, solid heavy uh, mass and then the rest of the things is getting connection and alternatively it is being tied up with those core in this building. So, this is example of the super frame, but uh, as I mentioned that uh, the mile high tower project in Chicago. So, here is being designed. So, you can see that multiple story being made and um, this is really uh, going uh, to a larger height and in this case it is basically the conjoint. So, four different structure they are conjoined to each other. So, if I want one structure to be built, so those corners to be made very strong with the super column of mega scale and then is getting connection at different you know 15 floor or 20 floor each to give better stability helping in resisting the load, uh, especially the lateral load. So, with this uh, like now if you want to summarize. So, this is all exterior structure and when we call exterior structure, when major part or uh, what we call major uh, lateral load sharing okay, to be done by the structural member placed at perimeter or maybe this is basically the exterior structure that is the fundamentals and based on that what we have seen we have category of tube we have also discussed tube structure okay we have discussed about the diagrid we discussed about the exoskeleton we also discussed about your uh, space truss system and also we discuss about the super frame. Now, in tube what we have seen that there are frame tubes and definitely when you go with frame tube you have certain limitation and when you uh, frame tube and then when you add bracing. So, it will become the braced tube that will give a better stability. So, brace tube structure will look like that when you have this uh, and you have connection at different flow level, this will actually relax the restriction of the close spacing between the columns in case of the framed tube. And then also we have seen in this category your uh, you know tube in tube where you both like the interior as well as the exterior both will take the load and also the bundle tube that we have seen in case of your um, uh, Burj Khalifa. Okay, so, what I ask you to just search, um, search and then get the detail uh, of the same bundle tube. Now, coming to the diagrid, we have seen the example where basically all the columns are inclined and they are making the grid that will carry both lateral uh, load as well as the axial uh, uh, as well. The exoskeleton that we have discussed about your uh, example of your Bujal RF, where uh, basically the main structure being placed outside of the building, so that the floor will not have restriction of the column and this is something where this structure itself is giving the first look of the building. So, this is your Bujal Arab about the exo exoskeleton structure. Then the space truss we have seen that where not only uh, the outside of the building, but also in this the truss the bracing is connected to the interior and we have seen some examples of the category and super frames is the concept where you have to use some uh, like super column okay, of high dimension at the corner and then you erect the building and then at different interval you have to connect it uh, with uh, your super beam and by this you can go up. 
So, this is all about this exterior structure, but this is something based on some category where interior and exterior structure are separated. Also, I have shown some of the examples using concrete and steel, but there are n number of list we can always add on and I just leave that task upon you. So, you just add more example into this category. Even in uh, recent development, so um, people are also thinking of going beyond the super frame. So, they go for the super beam conjoint where different super frame structure being uh, attached uh, together with different structural component, maybe a different level of your space truss or something and we can go even mile high tower and one of such projects uh, which is there uh, in Chicago, I have shown that. So, just go into detail and I have given the few of the links uh, as a source of those pictures where from I have taken. So, uh, if you browse to that, you can get more information and that will definitely help you to understand this. Uh, maybe you can get more, uh, you know, insightful idea. Uh, that we can use as a student, you can use it for your design. Uh, if you are you are designing something of you know high rise hotel or something, and even you do not design, then it is always better to know the system. Okay, Why only we appreciate the beauty and overall form of the uh, skyline, but also know how it works. So, with that, I conclude this, and these are the uh, study material I have mentioned earlier. So, this book is very useful. If you get access to this, please go through this book. You will get more information, more case studies as well. And uh, as I mentioned case studies, so the next lecture uh, will be on that. So, we have learned uh, about uh, the evolution of structural system and then we also uh, came to know about the interior structure and the exterior structure. But now, it is better to have uh, not all a uh, few uh, very important buildings which are really uh, you know put uh, the footprint for in, in the list of the tallest structure in the recent times we will touch upon uh, few of them and try to know the detail of that like the material use, the spacing and some more insight not uh, with only one diagram or something we will try to understand that. Okay. And also after that, uh, what I suggest that you will, uh, I will give you some example, you just go through that case study and then uh, just discuss it in the forum. And I will be happy to discuss that thing, if something uh, to be clarified, I will be more than happy to do that. So, with that, I conclude this lecture and we will be meeting in the next lecture, which is uh, your mega structure an architecture case study and uh, before you know in this course uh, so we will be